All right, let's get started. You're going to start with the Peabody Picture Vocabulary Test. One of the most challenging things to do is to open it up and get it set up right. It's on an easel. So the black case, if you would take that out, and you need to set it up so that you're going to be practicing with the, uh, at least one person next to you for just a little while. So go ahead and take it out. Set it up so the person, whoever is the examiner, sees this side that says training. And the person next to you um, sees the pictures. Put, get the tab out that says training. Set. Got it? Okay. All right. As you can see, the, tr the training set is pretty easy. I'll um, go through this for you and then uh, have you take out a protocol and actually give it to each other for about five minutes or so, all right? It's always fun to do this. Um, so, to, so to teach this, by the way, I should give you some information about this. It is set for from two and a half years old to, I believe, 70 some, or is it 90? I, I forget which one goes up to age 90 and which one's 70 some. So, it's used in many, many ways to look at what words does a person or a, or a student um, recognize. What's the size of their receptive vocabulary? Not the words they can say and use in ordinary conversation, but the words they recognize. So at two and a half, you point to each of the four pictures and say, look at the pictures on this page. Put your finger on boy. Okay. Um, if it's incorrect, you can see it tells you exactly what to do. You'd say, you may not be sure, but put your finger on the one you think is right. And if they, it isn't correct, then it is incorrect. You say, this is a boy. Now let's try another one. Now here's the most difficult part of this. You have to pull the paper, the page down, okay, to go through it. And so then there's another training page. Once you know that they know how to respond by pointing or saying the number, you're ready to go on. But before we do that, if you go to the assessment protocol part of your notebook, you'll find a protocol that's the answer sheet. In assessment nomenclature, we call it a protocol. In teaching, we usually call it an answer sheet, right? So if you take out the answer sheet, it will be so that you have it in front of you, okay? You can take it out if you'd like or leave it in your binder. Um, notice that there are tabs on where to start. If you look at this sheet, I'd like you to all look at this for a minute. These are called sets. Each of these boxes are called sets. There's 12 questions in each set, and you're going to want to have what's called a basal and a ceiling, because for someone like an adult, you're not want, going to want to start at the two and a half year old level. You want to assume that everything below a certain number is, is correct, so it'll tell you where to start. All right, so if you go, let's assume that everyone here is, um, 19 or older, that's set 14 on this page, 19 or older, all right? And in your book, find that tab that says adults 19 or older. And to get to that, to get to that, you have to turn your book around I believe. Oh. What set does it say? It's set 14. Yep, so you have to turn the book around to find set 14. Like this. See, I told you the hardest part is getting set up, right? Oh. 
Okay. One fifty seven. Make sure that one fifty seven shows to your partner. Have you got that? Okay. Do you find one fifty seven? Okay. You see there's a marsupial there? Which I think is the word. Oh, it's not. Okay, you will want, who's giving it? You're giving it? Then turn it around. Oh, she, she's giving it. You are correct. You are correct. You're ready to go? You know what? We're having trouble reading ours because it's, 150, who's giving it? read on the tab. It says yeah. start age eight. Age eight. If you flip it over. If you flip it over, it's there. Right. So you. It's backwards. The toughest part is finding the starting point, right? It is. But you're at the right starting point. Does it show 157? Mm. Nope. No, Who's it taking it? Well, we're doing this way. I think it shows 157. Yep. So who's taking it? Are you taking it? You're giving it? You're taking it? Yep. All right, let her see that then. Yeah. All right, so who's taking it over here? She's taking it. Okay, Edith. I'm just the two. All right. <laughs> so I see everybody's got it right. All right, now here's the deal. The basal is you must give all 12 in this set 14, and the basal is zero or only one wrong. If that happens, then you keep going up. If it doesn't happen, you go down till you get zero or only one wrong. So that's how you do that. When do you stop? Well, either when they reach all the way at the end, <laughs> um, which happens sometimes, or when, you see the ceiling set, eight or more wrong in a set. So eight out of 12 wrong. You stop. Got that? Go ahead and practice it. We'll come around and help you to make sure that you're starting right. I neglected to give you some rather basic information, which is if there is an error, you would slash the E. Um, what you notice in each of those sets, I'm sure you've already f uh, figured out, is that the red number is the correct one, okay? So if you just slash your E's, then it's pretty easy to count up to when you get to eight. All right, I want to show you how you actually score this, and then I'll show you what it means. So hold, keep this one handy and take out your manual. There's a manual in each case, and I'd like you to open it to page 147. We're going to assume that somebody in the age range of 31 to 35 took this test this morning. Just hypothetical, right? I figured do about, do about half my age, Will. Okay. So if you have it open to 147, you notice that it is for ages 31 to 35. You also notice that there are raw scores for both Form A and Form B. You all have Form A, okay? This is what the foundation is, um, is giving to each of our grantees, Form A. Um, let's assume that this particular hypothetical 35-year-old got a raw score of um, 20, 225. If you look down form A, to, down the column, till you see 225, what standard score does it uh, equate to? 136. 136. So why don't we use that yellow form and actually put in standard score 136. This hypothetical 35-year-old just took the pretest and got a standard score of 136. Can we write on this? Right on it, okay. yeah, cause, oh, you, because you'll be getting more. There are some in your folder already. This is a practice one. Okay, what was the original number, 224? 
225, correct. Here's what you need to do. Let's say that person got to, um, <laughs> 228, so this person got 225, got almost all of them, right? So they got all the way to 228 and only missed three. That would give, it, give that person 225, right? Okay? Or a standard score of 136. Now standard scores don't mean as much as percentiles, especially if you're working with parents or other people. So uh, put the percentile, uh, the standard score there, and then, and by the way, uh, you're gonna wanna tab this next page. Page 181. Page 181 will give you percentiles. And every standard score equates to the same each, each percentile, okay? So if you look for 136, what do you find for percentile? 99. We had a very intelligent 35-year-old here take the test today, right? So if you put the percentile on there at 99, what 99 means, the best way to explain this to parents or other teachers is to say that this person did better than 99 out of 100 people his or her age or great, his age or his age, because these are age norms, okay? So only one person who took this test in the national norming sample did better than this particular person in that age range. So that's what a percentile will mean. Let's go back to your very first page of this protocol because that really shows you the percentile, the, where percentiles come in. Do you see the standards um, Gaussian curve, the bell-shaped curve there? And if you look at average, it goes down to the 50th percentile and it's and a standard score of 100. Ignore the rest of the numbers below it. Standard score is 100, the 50th percentile. That means that if someone scored at that level, they would have done better than 50 out of 100 students his age or her age, that, which also means 50 would have done better. So 99 is way over here, okay? 99th percentile. Is way, way up here. So everybody clear on what percentiles mean? How many out of 100 that person would have done better? Sometimes kids are only at 16, which means 84 kids are doing better. Many of the kids we work with, and young adults, and even older adults, are very, very high on receptive vocabulary. They're going to be very low on some of their achievement. Okay, so we'll come back to this because you'll be able to plot not only the PPVT on here, but you can also plot their reading and spelling standard scores and percentiles here. So you'll be able to, in most cases, show that there's a big gap between what they understand and what they can read and spell. Okay, so keep this in mind as we go through. Last questions. This is the fastest I've ever gone through the PPVT. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are, all of you. But it is, it's, it's, you, the kids can, if they're young kids, sometimes they'll point, in which case you should be sitting next to them so you can see what they're pointing to. If they're older kids, um, once in a while, some of the things I've learned about this is if you're working with a, a student who has attention deficit disorder, some are very impulsive, so they're gonna point before they think. One of the things I have learned to do is to say, look, 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 so that I'm directing their attention to all four pictures, then I say what the stimulus is. So I have them look at the fir pictures first and then say what they're to point to or the number to say, okay? Some kids like to pull that, um, that um, page down, which saves you a little bit of time, so those kinds of things are just fine. Some kids will make three or four basals, 
they'll go four sets in a row where they don't miss any or only one. You take their highest floor, their highest basal to, as the starting point. And then you go to where they miss eight and count back between that highest basal and their highest correct score, how many were incorrect. That clear? You start with the highest one they answered correctly, subtract the ones they missed down to their highest basal. Okay? With junior high kids, where do you start? With junior high kids? You can usually start at the age. At the age, okay. Yeah. Unless they are really pretty low in receptive vocabulary, it's going to start them low enough okay. that they'll get success before you, they start hitting problems. All right? Okay, good. So that's the PPVT. Um, by the way, do not necessarily expect a big jump in this one from one year to the, to the next, okay? If kids get at the same standard score, it means they've made a year's growth. To stay at the same, you mean, it means you've done the same as kids who are another year older. If you get a jump, it's because they're starting to read and they're starting to read a lot because that's where their vocabulary really starts to go up, okay? And if you're working specifically on vocabulary using slash and dash, you may definitely see this go up too. But don't get discouraged if it stays about the same, okay? Because it's, it, it's not designed to be something that you can actually teach these words, okay? Any standardized test is a sample of a thousands of words that they could take. Okay, so you're all experts on that. <laughs>